So next is to part B. Use the log differentiation. to find y prime, okay, where the y or the f of x, so I name it the y, is the expression one minus eight x multiplied by four x minus seven to the power second, all divided by the cube root of five x plus two is it can be done by doing the straightforward way, but it's too much work because you're gonna apply the quotient rule, apply the product rule, apply the chain rule or the general power rule on top of it. So many things, so many little pieces you have to worry about. So since the problem indicate the log differentiation, again, I'm gonna write one more time for the log properties that we're gonna use. Number one, natural log of the product is log of the sum, I mean, log of the m plus log of the n, or the sum of the two logs, sorry, I was wrong. And then number two, the natural log of the m over n, which is the log of the numerator minus log of the denominator. And number three, log of m to the power r is r times the natural log of the m. First step of the log differentiation, you can apply the natural log both sides of the equation. Okay, the left hand side is the y, the right hand side is a mess at what you saw, one minus eight x multiplied by four x minus seven to the power second over, now I'm gonna write the cube root as the power form or the power one over three. Why I write in this form? Because look at the property that I have, I have the product form, I have the quotient form, I have the power form. I'm gonna have to adjust it in the form that I'm able to apply the log properties to make the problem less complicated. Now, to apply the natural log both sides, the left-hand side, not much you can do, just leave it as the natural log y. The right-hand side, the main part of the expression is about the quotient. We're gonna use the quotient property first for this, for the first round of simplifying. Make it as the numerator divided by the denominator here. That means our expression can be rewritten as the log of the numerator altogether subtracted by natural log of the denominator. Okay, we first apply the quotient property. And then after we apply the quotient property, look at each one of them. For each one of them, we have, let me see, the first part, if I write the parentheses around here, so you can see this, the quantity behind the first log is in the form of the product. I use different colors, hope it's not too messy. I have the product of two pieces here. Okay, when I see the product, I'm gonna use the product property for this expression. The second term, I have the power. I'm gonna apply the third property for the second log here. So look at one at a time. I do not want you to be too confused here. The left-hand side, nothing we can do, write it as a log y. The first log on the right-hand side, we use the product property. It becomes the log of one minus eight x added by log of four x minus seven quantity squared. Okay, and then the last term, we use the power property, the power becomes the constant multiple and multiplied by the log of the quantity 5x plus two. All right, let's check each term. The first term look good. Second term, oh, we still see the power here. I'm gonna apply the power property one more time for the middle term. Now we have natural log y equals natural log of one minus eight x 
the power becomes the coefficient or the constant multiple for the second law. And the last term we already did, so nothing we can do for this step for the last term. Now we have three different terms of the log on the right hand side, and each one is simpler, no product involved, no power, no quotient. The first step of the log differentiation is completed. And then for the second term, I mean the second step, second step here, we're gonna apply the derivative both sides of the equation of all terms. We have one, two, three, four, four of them. So we find that d by dx of each one of them Okay, from what we have, we have by the derivative of log y on the left equals the derivative of log of one minus eight x and derivative of log of two times log of four x minus seven minus the derivative of one over three natural log of five x plus two. This step is involving implicit differentiation. And then simplify each one. Now we're going to have to refer to the derivative of the log of the quantity. I'm going to put a note here. If you have the derivative of the log of the x is 1 over x, the derivative of the log of the gx is 1 over gx times the g prime of the x. Okay same set of the information you use or refer to. So this is the G. So then the G prime is gonna be Y prime. For the first term on the right, so this is your G and your G prime is negative eight. The middle term, the GX is four X minus seven. So then the G prime is four. The last term, the GX is five X plus two. So then the G prime of the X is five. Okay, we're gonna apply the rules here. We already identify each one as a G and the five the G prime to finish up. All right. The first one we have one over y times y prime. Second one we have one over the quantity one minus eight x multiplied by negative eight plus two as a constant multiple multiplied by one over g, which is the quantity four x minus seven multiplied by the derivative of the g, which is four subtracted by one over three times one over the quantity five X plus two multiplied by five. As you see, we apply the, um, what do you call the chain rule to find the derivative of log of the quantity GX. The next step, what we can do, we just rewrite or simplify the right-hand side expressions as much as we can. Now we get the right hand side, the left hand side as one over y, y prime, and then negative times one, negative eight times one is negative eight divided by one minus eight x. Second term, two times one times four becomes eight divided by the quantity of four x minus seven. The last term, one times one times five for the numerator becomes numerator five divided by three, times the quantity 5x plus two. Do not distribute three to the quantity because otherwise you don't make it less uh, complicated. You just leave it the way it is as a product of the number and the quantity. At this point, we are done finding the derivative. The next step, what we're gonna do, we're gonna find, we're gonna solve for dy by dx or solve for y prime. How do we solve for y prime? y prime is right here. Same routine. You're going to get rid of one over y. So multiply both sides by the quantity y. So y and y here will be reduced. Therefore, I'm going to use the empty space here. So my y prime, so my y prime going to be 
the quantity y multiply by negative 8 over 1 minus 8x plus 8 divided by 4x minus 7 minus 5 divided by 3 3 times 5x plus 2. And again, what is my y, my original y? My original y is the messy expression right here. So I just finish it off by rewriting the y as the expression provided. That means my y prime is the quantity one minus eight x times four x minus seven quantity squared divided by the cube root of five x plus two times negative eight over one minus eight x plus eight divided by four x minus seven minus five divided by three times five x plus two. Yep, and this is our y prime after using the log differentiation.